The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello, everyone. This is Dennis Kay here with Belize Island in Real Estate. I want to wish you a beautiful day and a big thank you for showing up on today's webinar. Uh, we got just about one more minute to go before we officially launch live to uh, give everyone a chance to get settled in. Uh, so uh, thank you again for attending. And uh, just as uh, a technical uh, check, if you can hear my voice and uh, see my opening slide with a picture of myself, can you please type yes in the question box if I'm coming through clear, if there's any issues with the screen or the audio. Uh, type in yes if you can hear me okay. That way I know I'm getting it through loud and clear. Anybody? Anybody hearing me okay? Maybe there is a problem with my audio. Hang on one second. Let's check out the audio and see if it's working okay. Audio. Is audio working, guys? Can you hear me? Oh, wait. I just seen a hand pop up. Thanks a lot, Joshua. Appreciate that. Uh, yes, excellent. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Joshua. All right, excellent. So uh, we're going to begin here. Um, and again, I appreciate everyone showing up today. Uh, a couple of things before we get going. First of all, I am fighting a cold. Uh, so if you hear me cough a little bit, I apologize for that. I'm drinking some hot tea to try to keep the throat clear. Uh, also, I'm coming to you live from the city of Strasbourg, France. It's on the border between uh, France and Germany. My wife are spending some extended time here exploring this part of Europe. And the reason I'm telling you this is because our Airbnb is situated uh, right close to at least two or three churches, which are very popular here in Strasbourg. And their uh, their bells seem to go off uh, at random times. Um, so if you um, if, if it starts to uh, break up a bit, or if you hear some loud church bells, uh, that's what's going on. So let's begin. Uh, I see many of you are logging on that are um, repeat clients of mine, uh, people that have bought property from me before. So I appreciate that. You're probably here looking for some excellent updates. Uh, but I also see some newbies, uh, names that I don't recognize. And so uh, uh, this uh, webinar is going to be giving all of you a chance to really find out what's going on on Amargus Key, especially the updates in and around Secret Beach. And I think it's going to be really good information for all of you. Now, the um, the, the way I normally do these webinars is I go through my presentation and at the end I do some extensive Q&A. Uh, but this time I like to do it a little bit different. If you have any questions at all, uh, please type them in the question box as we go through this information. And then that way we can, um, we can try to answer some of them as we go through rather than saving them all to the end. So um, appreciate that. All right, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Dennis Kay. My wife is Stephanie. We are both born and raised in Michigan. Then we moved to Belize in 2003. We spent uh, two and a half years on the mainland, uh, nine years uh, full time on Ambergris Key, and uh, built up a, a pretty successful business for ourselves. And then uh, decided to travel the world. So we've been traveling extensively for the past, oh, uh, four or five, six years. Uh, still spending a good amount of time in Belize, but also exploring other parts of Europe and Asia. And uh, what really helped my business take off, uh, besides all my wonderful clients, is some of the exposure I got from working with people such as House Centers International, uh, Live Here, Buy This, which was a, an episode that ran in Canada for several years, and also being on several investment podcasts. Uh, so uh, we really, really had a lot of fun with this. Belize has been good for us. It's been really good for a lot of our clients. And uh, we hopefully uh, it's, it can be good for you, too. So the reason I wanted to put this webinar together especially was because it seems like the past few weeks I've been getting a lot of, let's just say, negative emails about Belize. I don't know if it's just uh, the Internet's way of being moody and grumpy, but I've been getting comments, um, uh, negative comments about Belize itself, about real estate in Belize, about different things. And so uh, what I want to do, I just wanted to go on the record today and uh, just to get this webinar out there and tell everyone the truth about Secret Beach Belize. Now, this isn't all just uh, sunshine and roses and, and puppies and kittens. You know, there are some negatives about Belize. We don't cover those over. Uh, we definitely expose what those are to give everybody the honest truth and a clear picture of what's going on. But we're also going to dispel a lot of misconceptions and a lot of just plain bad information that is going around out there, especially regarding uh, this part of the, um, of the country. So my goal for this webinar is threefold. First of all, I want to cover some of the facts the history, the good and bad things that are happening on Ambergris Key and especially around um, Secret Beach. And then I want to uh, show you a few options if you are considering being an investor in Belize. Maybe you want a vacation home, retirement home, or just some sort of investment property. I'm going to give you three different options that I think are good deals. 
And then, as I mentioned, we're going to get, conclude with some extensive Q&A at the end, but also uh, right through the entire um, broadcast. So any questions that come to mind, go ahead, pop them in the question box, and uh, we'll go from there. Let me just do one quick thing before we start, Ernest, just so I have an idea of, uh, of who's online today. Let me just launch this quick poll. This just gives me an idea of who's showing up, if you've been to Belize before, what you're looking to do, and uh, it helps me to tailor my presentation just a bit. So please go ahead and vote if you would. Um, I'll leave this up for thir just 30 seconds. Like I said, I don't want to waste your time. I want to get into the, uh, the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts of, uh, of, of Belize. But this would really help me out. If you just take a minute and vote, and uh, then I will show everybody the results so you too can see who's attending this webinar today. So thank you very much. Let's just grab a little sip of tea here. <clears throat> and you're still voting, but uh, let me go ahead and close this out. Another five seconds. Wow, this is very interesting. Interesting numbers coming out. All right. And I'll close it out. And I'll share the results so you can see. So it looks like 17% of you are just curious about, about Belize and want to learn more. That's good. This is a good way to do it. 17% of you are looking to own vacation property. 17% would like to retire in Belize. Well, that's an interesting mix. And then 50% would like to invest in Belize real estate. Excellent. Very good. So we're going to cover uh, uh, aspects of all of those, all four of those, as we go through our webinar. First of all, as promised, I want to take you back and show you what's really happening on Ambergris Key and especially on this west coast of Ambergris Bay. Now I notice some of you are, who are attending today own property in places such as Grand Belizean Estates, Palmyra Woods, Ambergris Bay, Secret Beach. So this is going to be very interesting for you as well as interesting for those of you who don't know anything about the island because this history is important and it goes in with making a good educated decision on whether or not to buy in this area. So uh, back in 2003, if you scroll back your Google Earth to the year 2003, and it's a neat feature. If you haven't played with this before, it's kind of cool. You could actually scroll back on Google Earth to see what an area looked like years ago. So in 2003, you can see on this map, you see the entire island of Ambergris Key on the right. And then I'm pointing with the yellow arrow to San Pedro Town. Now, at the time, that was the only town on Ambergris Key. It had sandy roads. There was no paved roads yet. And then I outlined an area with a yellow rectangle. Now, if you look at that area, there is absolutely nothing there. There is no roads. There is no homes. There is no infrastructure. There's absolutely nothing. It's just pure, void, uh, raw native land. That was in 2003. But something very interesting happened in 2003. The government of Belize created a subdivision in this area called Ambergris Bay. And I have the original plot map right here. So you see in the yellow arrow, I'm pointing toward uh, this subdivision is requested by the government of Belize. And for those of you who aren't familiar with how Belize works, you might ask, why would the government itself create a subdivision? Well, because what they have in place in Belize is that every uh, natural born Belizean or everyone who becomes a, becomes a Belizean, gets a Belizean passport, can request a free piece of land from the government. Now, I say free, it comes with a nominal charge because there's some paperwork involved and things like that, but every Belizean is granted a piece of land. Now, they don't get to choose necessarily where this piece of land is. And if we go back to the slide here in 2003, the government created the subdivision in the middle of nowhere. Now, San Pedro Town is only three and a half miles, by the way, the crow flies, but there was no roads in this area, no infrastructure, and other than the beachfront roads, the, the people could not even see their second, third, fourth, fifth row lots going all the way back. As an example, here are some snips of the actual subdivision maps that were created back in 2003. And you see that there's a row of beachfront lots. So I guess if you had a boat, you could arrive at those lots and see what kind of property you were granted. But if you own the second, third, fourth, fifth row lots going all the way back a quarter, third of a mile or so, you had no idea what your lot looked like. But at least you had a surveyed piece of land and you were a property owner on Ambergris Key. Again, take a look at this slide. This slide was also from 2003, outlining the Ambergris Bay subdivision. Now, again, you see nothing there, do you? There's no roads. There's no nothing. It's just pure native land. So how were these people ever going to access their land? 
Well, the government doesn't have the funds, and neither were they going to ever give access to this area out of their own pocket. That wasn't part of the deal. The part of the deal is you get a piece of property, you figure out yourself how to, uh, how to get it and use it. However, something happened out of the side of the ground of the Belize government in 2009 to 2011. A developer who is very prominent on Ambergris Key, who's been living and working there for 30 years, decided to create what is now known as Grand Belizean Estates. It's a subdivision of land with 1,000 lots in it. And those lots completely sold out between 2009 and about 2015 uh, 2016. So 100% success rate. They all sold out. But you notice what he did in this slide. Again, this is 2009 to 2011. This developer actually put roads in giving access to all of those lot owners. So that was nice for his uh, clients, right? For the, for the clients that bought in there. But what he also did is he built a road, we call it the East-West Connection Road, that actually goes from San Pedro Town up to the north side and then over to the west, that's to the left of your screen, to access the lots at Grand Belizean Estates. And then he carried on the road right out to Dead End at Secret Beach. So this is before anything was known of Secret Beach. But notice in the slide, the Ambergris Bay subdivision still does not have any roads in it. Why not? Well, because again, the government is not about to spend the money. They cannot afford to spend the money to put roads in this subdivision. So here is where it gets very interesting. Fast forward, 2018, 2019. Now we have a, a more recent updated Google Earth photo. And look at what has happened now in the Secret Beach area. Because you have Grand Belizean Estates to the right on your screen, you have this access road now that runs and dead ends right at Ambergris Bay. So now because a few of those lot owners have access to their lots, you see some development taking place. So you see uh, there, there's a couple homes there, there are some businesses, and now you see these little tiny roads start to pop up that give access to dozens of lots in this area. So now for the first time ever, this part of the island can begin to be developed. And that's why it's really exciting for many of us. So there's there's pros and cons uh, from East Coast development, which we call the, the Caribbean side, uh, as regards the West Coast development. Now, what are the pros and cons? Well, let me just quickly go back to this um, uh, to this picture right here. Okay. So what you're looking at here is an aerial photo of Ambergris Key looking from the south to the north. So the, the coastline you see there is the east side of Ambergris Key. And then to the right, you have that, that reef line. That's the, the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef, large, second largest reef in the world. And then if you look to your upper right of your screen, you see that another big patch of blue? That's Ambergris Bay. That is the west side of Ambergris Key. So what is the difference if you're looking between east side and west side, where should you buy? Well, here's some pros and cons. Let's go back to this slide. The east coast gives you immediate access to the reef. Now, why is that important? Well, because if you like to snorkel or dive or deep sea fish, then at the reef or just beyond the reef is where you're going to be doing those activities. So if you want to be uh, immediately accessible to the reef, you probably want the east side. Also, the east side has good road access and distance to San Pedro Town. So some of the, the roads are paved now going south and north around the, along the east coast. And so getting to and from San Pedro Town is fairly easy. Also, uh, many of these areas along the east coast already have access to electric, phone, cable, and internet. And most importantly for large developers is the east coast had uh, large development packages available. Now, this wasn't true of the West Coast, so we'll explain why in a little bit. But you see most of the major resorts like Cocoa Beach, Victoria House, uh, Las Terrazas Resort, um, all these major resorts that have 50 or more uh, condos and hotel rooms, they found the space they needed to develop all on that East Coast. So that's where you're going to see most of the major resorts. Now, the East Coast also has its cons. Number one, you get a lot of trash rolling up on the beaches from the Caribbean. So you see trash that does not originate 
on the island of Ambergris Key, rolls up and it gets caught and you have to rake it and constantly pick it up. Also, there is a seagrass, uh, not a problem with seagrass, but because the waters are very shallow in front of the east coast, you have grass that grows in the water itself. And so it's not really conducive to swimming from the beach. Uh, but thirdly, the major problem the island is having now, not just the island, but also many parts of Florida, uh, parts of uh, the Southern Caribbean, parts of Mexico, are also having this problem with the sargassum grass. And this is also uh, causing a lot of problems with health, with uh, the beach cleanup and so forth. So going back to this picture, you can see the waters are absolutely beautiful when you get past the shoreline. But what does the East Coast shoreline look right, like right now? Well, here is a typical picture. This the picture was taken from the San Pedro Town Council's website. In town, they hire guys to actually rake this sargassum grass off the beach and then take it to a dump. But if you're a private homeowner or resort owner, then you have to hire somebody to do this yourself. And it just rolls in uh, every day, week after week on the beaches. So in order to get past it, you have to go 100 yards or so past this seagrass to get out to open water where you can actually swim. Here's the uh, the trash problem I was talking about along the East Coast. You see all those uh, plastic bottles and whatnot. Now, this obviously hasn't been raked in a while, uh, maybe a, a few months. But once that's raked, that might stay nice for a while. But then you're going to have to clean it every so often. So those are some of the issues that the uh, that the East Coast is having. Now, hang on one second. I see somebody raising their hand, but I can't see the question that they're um, they're typing in. Uh, okay, you know what? I can't see it. Wayne's trying to ask a question, but I don't see it. He's raising his hand. I don't see it. Sorry about that, Wayne. We'll try to get to you here in a little bit. So what are the pros and cons then of the West Coast or secret beaches? Well, some of the pros are you have very clean and clear waters clean beaches because no sargassum grass rolls up, no, no grass grows, no seagrass grows in those waters, and no trash washes up. So it's very pristine and excellent for swimming over there. Number two is that you have fantastic sunset views. You know, on the entire island of Ambergris Key, most everything is developed on the east coast. So we get sunrise views. Problem is the sun rises at 5.30 in the morning, sometimes even earlier. So if you're not an early riser, you're not, you're not catching any of those sunrises, and you don't see any of the sunsets because that's behind you. Uh, so the west side has the benefit of, of getting those beautiful sunsets, which most everyone is, uh, is awake and, and ready for. Also, the prices for beachfront and off-beach lots are much, much, much lower than on East Coast properties. Just uh, not... I would say at least half price, sometimes even more than 50% cheaper. It also makes for safer water activities. So for example, kayakers, canoers, um, people who like to, just to swim off the beach find it uh, much more safe because the East Coast has so much boat traffic, it makes it a little dangerous. There's been uh, some very serious accidents uh, because of people swimming in areas that they didn't realize were a high traffic boat area. Uh, so the West Side offers much safer water activities. Now, let's talk about the cons. There are absolutely cons. What are they? Number one is the lack of roads. Uh, I'm going to explain this in detail, how this works, how roads expand in this area. But number one is there's absolutely a lack of road access to the majority of lots at Secret Beach. Not all, but the majority. Number two is that if you live or own a home on that part of the island and you want to access the reef, it's going to take you longer to get to the ocean. You're going to have to go around the southern tip of Ambergris Key. So, for example, from Secret Beach itself to get actually out to the ocean, it's probably going to take you 30 minutes by boat, maybe 25, 30 minutes out to the, um, uh, to the reef. Uh, number, let's see, number three is that uh, Ambergris Bay and Secret Beach all has lots that are of standard residential size building lots. And so for the time being, there are no large development parcels. So if a hotel chain wanted to come in, let's say uh, the Hilton wanted to come in and, and build a, another hotel in this area, there is not any large parcels available um, to build on. Now, why is that the case? Well, let me just quickly back you up and go to these plot maps. Remember, the reason Ambergris Bay Secret Beach was, was originally created by the Belize government was to give each Belizean 
a place to build their home on. So when you look at this map, you see those are all individual lots. And very rarely can you even find two lots together because uh, you might be able to find one where maybe a husband and a wife own lots together and they want to sell or maybe an uncle and a nephew or something like that. But you see each of these is owned individually. So the larger projects that are coming to the island are not going in to this part of the country. They're, they're choosing somewhere else for the time being. So that could be a pro or a con, depending on, on, uh, on how you're looking at it. And then the last one that I wanted to mention here, let me get back to my slide on the West Coast, is it's off-grid. So right now, there is no electric in the area. There is no water. Now, just, just a comment about water. All The entire north side of Ambergris Key, including everything on the East Coast, does not have access to city water. All of the homes... Uh, private uh, residences, all the resorts, even the major resorts with 70 and 100 uh, condos each, those are all completely ran by water that is uh, by RO systems or wells or rainwater catchment systems. So there is no water available on the north side of Ambergris Key. Everyone just gets it for themselves through those means. Now, also in Seeker Beach, there is no electricity yet. Now, we do expect that to be coming soon. However, uh, we are not in control of when that gets there. It's between the Belize Electric Company. Uh, they look at what areas are growing. They look at the, the return on investment they're going to get from putting in the money to service an area with power. Oh, and there, right on time, are those, uh, are those church bells. So hopefully you can still hear me over them. They should stop in a minute. But So those are, are some of the cons of uh, investing in Secret Bates. We're going to show you how people are overcoming as some of those challenges. First of all, a few pictures. This is the West Coast. This is the uh, beach club uh, for the Hilton Hotel. Now, many of you are familiar with Ambergris Key. You know that the Hilton Curio Collection opened up a uh, brand new hotel on the south side of the island. This is not on the East Coast or the West Coast. This is located in an area where it sits on canals. Uh, but uh, to give their clients a place to hang out and to enjoy the water sports and the water activities, they created a beach club, and these are actual pictures of the beaches just south of Secret Beach on Ambergris Bay. And again, you see these beautiful, uh, beautiful sunsets. Now, let's go back and discuss these, this area as it uh, relates to roads, utilities, and infrastructure. First of all, it's important to know that there are no plans for major road installations. Roads here grow organically. And what do I mean by that? Let's go back to this picture that uh, for the latest, there we go, Google Earth shot between 2018 and 2019. So you see, Grand Belizean Estates, that does have all the roads there because the developer put those in. But then if you look to your left at the area around Secret Beach, you find these thin, what, what, the roads, they're much larger than they look on the screen, obviously, but they're, uh, they're crushed limestone roads. Now, who put those in? Well, it's those individual lot owners that wanted to gain access to their properties. Uh, so, for example, let's say somebody had a, a, a property that was one or two blocks um, north of Secret Beach that did not yet have road access. Well, you can see in this picture, that's exactly what happened. There was no road access. The guy still wanted to build his house. So him and a couple other property owners in the area went ahead and put the road in. The same thing is happening south. Now, since this Google Earth shot was taken, there are more roads in the area. The roads are starting to expand from north to south, but it's important to know that if you buy a lot that is too far from having road access, you might have to wait a while, or you might have to get creative with your neighbors and coming up with some funds to hire someone to come in with a bulldozer, bulldoze that road in, lay some gravel down, and access your lot. Now, this hasn't been cost prohibitive for most of the people that are, are, uh, are building in this area, they just figure it's, it's part of the cost of building. But you do have to take that into consideration uh, when you buy a property in this area. What else should we cover? Well, besides the road uh, issue, um, the entire area is off-grid. But we're going to show you some things that people have been doing here. And what I mean by off-grid, I mean it doesn't have access to electric yet. Because I mean, like I said, water, it's never going to have water. Uh, but electric is an issue that many people are talking about. The area does have internet and cell phone service, so that's all available there. So how are they doing the electric? Well, they're either doing it with wind turbines, solar power, or generator. 
And again, your rainwater is by rainwater catchment, well, or RO system. So here's a more recent picture of the secret beach area. Again, talking about some of the things I mentioned with road access. So now you see uh, definitely roads are being more defined, giving access to the uh, beachfront, the second row, many times the third and the fourth row lots. And that's just going to continue. There's a lot of development in the area. And so one of the things I want to address right now is the biggest question I get is, you know, it's off grid. When is it going to have blank or blank or blank as if they're, they're holding back from investing or they're holding back from building until the area gets electricity or until another step in development takes place. Now, here is what is already there that is up and running. And I'm going to show you pictures of these things. So just don't take my word for it. See the proof. These are actual businesses that are doing an incredible amount of businesses with locals and uh, tourists and vacationers and even uh, uh, retirees on the island. So we have Secret Paradise Bar and Grill, Pirates Not So Secret Beach Bar and Grill, Maruba Beach Club, Paco's Secret Beach Bar and Grill, the Blue Bio Bar, Aurora's Bar and Grill, Paradise on the Key, which offers uh, bed and breakfast, several cabanas, Casanova Cabanas, which is recently going to open here in September 2019, and several private homes and estates. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of these things because sometimes when clients email me and they get turned off or they get scared away by, by the term off-grid, they think something's got to be very primitive, you know, a, a thatched roof hut or just something very, very simple in order to be off-grid. But this is not true. For example, in this slide, you see the Maruba Beach Club, you see the Blue Bayou Bar, and you see Paco's. These are fully uh, up and running establishments with food, with drinks, with music, absolutely able to service all their clients in, in, a, in a high fashion. In this slide here, you see uh, Pirates Not So Secret Beach Bar. You see Paradise on the Key. They're offering their uh, beach, uh, beach view uh, cabanas for rent. And uh, you see other, um, you see the Par Secret Paradise Bar and Grill there. Again, fully equipped ki kitchens, cooking everything under the sun, great food, great entertainment, uh, just thriving businesses in the area. The most recent one uh, to open up is called Casanova Cabanas. Uh, this is a brand new small eco resort. Uh, and in fact, I just went to the uh, Airbnb website today, and it's interesting. It says even though this is off grid, it's not without luxury. So they have air conditioned units, they have all the services and amenities that you expect with a property on grid. And here it is completely uh, off grid in the beautiful area, about a quarter mile, third of a mile north of Secret Beach. So they're going to be opening up. I think they're opening up now. Uh, getting rentals ready for the high season. But also, you don't have to go with something simple like a Belizean hardwood construction like this just because it's off grid. Give you an example a client of mine, uh, Keith and his family, uh, has spent the last year or so uh, hiring a builder on Everest Key to build this beautiful home. This is an aerial construction photo that I took with my drone just about, uh, oh, about eight months ago now. And look at this. It is finally complete, turnkey, ready to go, available on Airbnb. They're calling it the Secret Sunset Villa. The uh, quoted price here is comes with a 20% discount at $340 a night. I think it was actual price, something like uh, $485, something like that a night is where it's going to be renting out for. And uh, take a look at some of these pictures. Beautiful, direct beachfront property, has its own swimming pool right out front. Wonderful hammock to sit there and enjoy the... Uh, the uh, breezes coming in off the bay and the sunsets. You can see here is a picture of the living room. Excellent furniture, beautiful flooring. You see the AC units back there. It's 100% uh, AC. Every bedroom and living areas have AC. Here's a bedroom. One of the bedrooms facing the water. I think all three bedrooms face the water. You see flat screen TVs on the wall. You see ceiling fans. Again, air conditioning unit. Beautiful outfitted kitchen, stove. Microwave, refrigerator, nice lighting, everything ready to go. So there you go. So for those of you who are saying, ah, I don't know if I want to build off grid, I might want to wait till um, till electric gets there. Uh, this is what people are building off grid, and this is not uncommon. 
in the country of Belize. We have excellent builders. Uh, a lot of the materials they source for uh, uh, builds like this include low wattage uses appliances, so you can get away with solar panels. Let me just go back to um, uh, this picture. You can see the solar panels on the roof there. Uh, so excellent work done by our local builders and just uh, a really, really nice house uh, just south of Secret Beach. But if you want to get away with something a little simpler and perhaps more cost effective, uh, you can put a home like this on any of the Secret Beach lots. This is a Belizean hardwood constructed home built on site, uh, but you can also have a, a home built on the mainland and then shipped to the island. They bring it in by barge and have it installed. So you can use something like this, be a nice way to own a vacation home. Now, let me go back to something else that, that's been coming in off the internet, is this issue of the distance from San Pedro town. Now, if we go back and look at that, that Google Earth shot, we saw that it was three and a half miles as the crow flies to San Pedro town. In reality, to get there by road, it's about five and a half miles of drive time. Now, why does that seem to be an issue for some people. Well, if they visited San Pedro Town back in the day, and I'm talking going back five, six, eight, maybe 10 years, San Pedro Town mattered a lot because that is where all of the restaurants, the beach bars, the nightclubs, the grocery shopping was located. The, the town had the only services for those things. So if you were staying at a resort, for example, you know, three, four, five miles north of town, Anytime you wanted to get some milk or get some drinking water or, you know, go to a restaurant, you had to go all the way into town and then go all the way back at night. And so distance from town was important, right? And also even a lot of your tour operators, they operated out of town. So you had to come in town to, uh, to meet up with your tour operators and also even things such as doctor's offices. If you got sick during the day or night, you had to come into San Pedro town in order to find help. So from the start, Everything was measured in relation to San Pedro Town. So, for example, right now, if you still go on almost any real estate agent's website, you, you'll see things like this uh, resort or this piece of land or this home is located X number of miles from San Pedro Town because it's a benchmark. However, that has all completely changed now. We're going to see a, a, a massive uh, exodus now of people counting on San Pedro Town here coming up in 2019 and moving forward. Now, why? Well, let me show you this uh, Google Earth slide. Again, you see Secret Beach there at the top left corner. You see San Pedro Town as the crow flies over the arrow, uh, three and a half miles away, in reality, five and a half miles by road. However, the reason people counted on San Pedro Town, again, was for all those reasons I mentioned. Since then, there has been an explosion of resorts and communities that have been built and opened on the north side that have things such as grocery stores, cafes, beach bars, shops, bakeries, uh, tour operators, things to do. So, for example, yeah, the, the Mara Laguna Grocery Store, Grand Cree Resort, Cocoa Beach Resort, Belizean Shores Resort, Extanha Resort, Las Terrazas Resort, Mata Chica Resort, Tranquility Bay Resort, Captain Morgan's, Benicio del Caribe, the residences at Barrier Reef, and many, many more. All of these are large-scale developments, and they brought with them the services and the goods, the grocery stores, the things that people need. So now, if I'm a homeowner at Secret Beach, there's no way I'm driving into San Pedro Town to pick up some milk or drinking water or go off on one of the tours or access the reef or anything like that. I simply just drive across the island and go to any one of these areas, and I know I can get those basic services. So now, the distance to San Pedro Town is no longer relevant for those property owners at Secret Beach. It's becoming uh, meaningless in a way. And in addition, you see what Grand Belizean Estates and Ambergris Bay subdivisions have done for us is it's given us the, the, the core of the next major town on Ambergris Key. You see the size of San Pedro down on the lower left-hand side of your screen? It's very small. It, it, it's completely built out. There's no more room for growth. But you see the area where Palmyra Woods, Grand Belizean Estates, Secret Beach, that has enough population density once it gets built out to become a next major town on the island and to really service that Amargus Bay. Now, in addition to medical, uh, no longer is San Pedro the only place to get medical treatment. Uh, for example, at the Grand Creve Resort, they recently opened 
a branch of the Belize Medical Associates, which has emergency services available 24 hours a day, a lab, a pharmacy, excellent services right there. So if anything happens to you night or day, you can uh, head into the Belize Medical Associates. If something goes seriously wrong and they need to get you to Belize City, where the two private hospitals are, uh, then they have a, the helicopter landing pad is literally right across the street from here. So it's going to be an excellent service and a provision for all expats, retirees, and, uh, and locals living on the north side of Ambergris Key. So that being said, what I wanted to do next is share with you some recent comps. What have our actual sales been? Because again, it seems like the past two or three weeks, I've gotten some really negative comments regarding some of the things I've been putting out there for sale. Uh, some comments are like, oh, it's too expensive, it's not worth it, blah, blah, blah. Well, obviously those people aren't familiar with Belize, they're not familiar with what's going on. And as proof, I wanted to give my clients and those of you looking some actual comps. These are properties that have been put under contract and closed and funded full stop. So between January 2019 and August 2019, here are the actual beachfront lots that have sold. Parcel 8583, 8584, 8585, 8586, 8587, 8590, 8591. These are the actual sales prices from 175 US to 225 US with a pier. These lots were all north of Secret Beach, all beachfront properties. Here's some additional ones that were sold before this. The uh, parcels 8708. 8707, sold for 265,000 US and 225,000 US, again, under contract and sold and funded. We've also had a second row lot at Secret Beach sell for $75,000 cash, that sold and funded. A fourth and fifth row lots at Secret Beach sold for 55,000 US dollars each. And recently, a fire sale came on the market, parcel number 8520, which sold for 273 and it's two blocks from Secret Beach. So congratulations to the owner of that. Uh, all of these properties, uh, you guys did very, very well on. And so you might be saying, well, what is available? Okay, so now that you know what's there, what's sold, what property prices are, lots, are, are like, let's go on to, I'm going to give you three options, and I'm not going to belabor these, because if, if these aren't for you, then I don't want to waste your time. But here are three options that we have right now in the Secret Beach area. Number one, we have two side-by-side -side lots in the Ambergris Woods Secret Beach area. This is located two blocks from Secret Beach, just next to where that lot sold for 27.3. Uh, these lots are priced at 34,000 US each. Uh, they are zoned residential or commercial, and they have title. This is very important. So they have free, clear, simple ownership title that is ready to transfer and most importantly financing is available through the seller so for those of you who aren't able to come up and write the check for thirty-four thousand, you can absolutely finance these with the seller and you can email me more information regarding those uh, regarding those terms as far as exact location of these two lots here is a Google Earth shot with a plot map overlay. So you see those light green squares. Those are all the individual lots that have been titled, all individually owned. You see to the left of your screen, the businesses there, the uh, Secret Beach Bar and Gru Grill, Marubas, Pirates, the Bed and Breakfast. And then in the, uh, the light red overlay, I've outlined the Ambergris Woods subdivision. And exactly in that uh, yellow square, are where the two resales are located, lots number two and lot number three, priced at $34,000 each. Now, I was under the impression that these are the only two lot sales available. Uh, I was reminded this week that there is one more available, so there's a, a total of three lots available in this area. The lots do have access to road right now, so you can drive from these lots to Secret Beach down the main beach access road, but uh, in the future, you'll also be able to access the beach through this future beach access road that are dead end right at uh, Casanova uh, properties. Here's an aerial shot showing exactly how close these lots are to the beach. I think it's something like 0.29 miles from this subdivision uh, to the beaches of Ambergris Bay. And here's another aerial photo looking from west to east showing again the exact location. Here is a subdivision map showing the 34 lots that are there and the uh, exact location of lots uh, two and three. 
All right, let's go on to our second uh, property that I feel is a good deal. And this is, sits right on the main road leading to Secret Beach, just about a block back from it. Uh, this is a very high traffic road. Anybody coming in to and from Secret Beach has to pass by on this road. So if anybody is looking to open up a some sort of commercial business, that would benefit for being on a high traffic area, these lots would work. Now, these lots are, are much larger than a standard size lot. They're 100 feet by 100 feet each. The price on these is 100,000 US dollars for each lot. Here's a map showing the exact location. So again, Secret Beach, uh, to the left, you see all the businesses there. You see the main road, which is the blue arrows leading from uh, San Pedro Town, dead ending at Secret Beach. And in the yellow square, you see parcels number 8785, 8789. Uh, they are $100,000 each. And again, you can, you can see how they're laid out. It gives you 200 feet of road frontage by 100 feet deep. Uh, so and they're both corner lots, so it's excellent for a commercial business. Um, now, why is the price where it is? Well, because a, a standard in-town lot measures 50 by 75. So these lots are two and a half times larger than standard in-town lots. And you might think, well, what would I put on a lot like this if I bought one or both of them? Well, think about this, grocery stores. Remember I said right now the grocery stores are at the larger resorts on the East Coast. Right now, the West Coast has no grocery stores. What if you opened up a grocery store offering basics like bread and, and milk and beer and wine and things like that, things that people would, would want as they come to Secret Beach for the day? Or how about a gas station? A few, place for a future school as this area grows. Apartment rentals workout facilities, uh, inside restaurant. Right now, all the restaurants are outside. So you know what? If we get a, a lot of heavy rain and the mosquitoes come out for four or five days or a week, uh, then it's, it's, not, it's not any fun sitting on those beach bar stools. But what if you had an air-conditioned inside restaurant, uh, something that people could maybe dress up a bit more and go into, a little bit more high-end uh, quality style food, that might be nice. Or a pizza joint or a market or anything like that would be good to put on one, of, one or both of these lots. And then finally, the last thing I have to tell you about is, uh, is this beachfront lot parcel. Uh, it's about, um, well, let me see, it's, it's priced at 175 US. And here are some aerial shots of it. This parcel number 8698. It's got 60.85 feet of running beachfront on the, uh, on, the, on the front side and the water side, which expands to 98 feet of width at the back. And it's a full 172 feet deep. So you can do a very nice home, private estate on here, boutique uh, condo project, something like that. It is 0.73 miles north of Secret Beach. So it's in an excellent, excellent location. And you can see here the original plot map that was issued by the Belize government back in 2003. It's also known as Lot 409, and it's got uh, 1,151 square meters. Again, making it a really nice lot for a large private family estate or some several uh, cabanas that you could build for rent, something like that. But an excellent, excellent location for residential or a uh, commercial project. Again, here's a Google Earth snip showing how far it is from Secret Beach, 0.73 miles north from Secret Beach Bar and Grill. So those are the three things I wanted to tell you about today is the lot of Amargus Woods, the two lots there for 34000 each, the main road commercial lots for 100000 each, and the one large beachfront parcel for 175. And uh, so I wanted to go through all this information with you, not only for those of you who, who are new and just started to get your information together and starting to research Belize, but also I know many of you who attend and view these webinars are property owners in the area, and it's good for you to know what's going on too. Now, one more thing, there are some additional projects coming online. I am not uh, at liberty to just tell you what those are right now. The uh, the owners are keeping those private, uh, but uh, there's a, a, a owner that bought four lots from me several years ago. They're getting ready to open up a bed and breakfast on those four properties. They're going to be breaking ground here in 2020. There's also a very large uh, project going on south of the Secret Beach, right on the beachfront. Uh, so there's going to be something happening down there. But also the, the properties that I told you about today, uh, Keith and his family building that beautiful two-story White House, uh, the uh, the owners of Casanova Cabana Properties, uh, the other owners that uh, built Secret Beach Bar and Grill, all of those were my clients. I sold them those pieces of raw vacant land, as well as many other things that are going on in this area. And the good thing about this is, 
they had enough foresight to get in the game to to buy something. They went out on a limb, not sure, not really sure what was going to happen in the future, but they were able to get in on a good deal. And now they have something to move forward with. And that's what I hope some of you are able to do here. You can see that the prices here are way less than they are on the east side. I firmly believe they're going to keep going out because what you can get here as far as value is just excellent. So I'm going to take a sip of tea. I'll put my screen up. It says got questions and I'm 100% open to all your questions. Go ahead and type the questions in the question box and uh, I'll get to you. Uh, I see hands going up, but I actually can't see for some reason your question. Are you, are you typing your questions in the question box? Let me see, what's, what am I doing wrong here? Uh, hello, Jenny, can you hear me? Hello? Nope. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have a we have a question from Scott. Thanks, Scott. He says, "How is waste dealt with from homeowners?" Okay. This is a very good question. So let's go back to uh, some of the pictures, and I'll show you how that's handled. So, for example, in in this house here, uh, Keith's house, they have a self-contained septic system. Uh, with uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but they have an uh, organic, inorganic system where bacteria breaks down the solid waste, and it is sized according to how many bedrooms and how much usage the house would get. So they have a self-contained septic system in this house. It's the same that goes for this uh, these cabanas here at Casanova Cabanas. They have a self-contained septic system, so there is no leach field. There is no runoff into the water or the water table. It's the same thing with the upper right here, uh, cabanas at uh, Paradise on the Key. Again, engineered septic systems. And it's the same for uh, actually the beach club here, the Hilton Carrier Collection Beach Club, which has a nice restaurant, excellent facilities. Uh, so everything you see, um, Scott, on the north side, there is no sewer on the north side of the island. The only place that has access to sewer, a treatment plant, is some parts of San Pedro Town. And not even all of San Pedro Town has access to the water treatment plant. Uh, many homeowners and businesses and large resorts all go with engineered septic tanks, which need to be approved by the San Pedro Town Council, the, the building authority. So they're sized correctly, and they work very, very well uh, on Ambergris Key. All right. Let me just go back to uh, this, and I'll ask the next question. Hopefully it answered your question, Scott. If it didn't, you can go ahead and uh, ask a, a, another question or a clarifying question. I'd be happy to answer it for you. All right, you have a question from Josh. Josh says, uh, none of these have condos or houses on them. So, yeah, I showed you some houses. None of them have condo projects yet. That's going to be coming up. I think a, a few of my property owners do have something in mind to offer condos. But that would be my, my number one recommendation to anybody who is looking to invest in Belize. And if they have a, a, a little bit of capital set aside or if they have a few friends that they can all invest in together is to buy a piece of property and then build out a four unit complex, keep the complex and for the rental income or sell off the individual condos. Right now, there are no condos available on the entire uh, west side of Amargus Key. Absolutely none. That would be a fantastic project for somebody. So um, good questions, Josh. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's something we can uh, we can put a deal together on. Here's another question from Jenny. What are the building costs? Okay, building costs range from, and I'll show uh, Keith's house here. Uh, so a house like this is probably going to run about 155, 160 US per square foot. And that's with the solar, that's with the rainwater catchment or whatnot. Uh, so it depends really on where the lot is and if they can get materials right up to the property. As an example, most of the materials for this comes from Belize City. So they bring it over by bar. So if they can deliver the materials fairly close to the lot, then there is a lot of transportation cost. If they have to truck it into a, a major port or major dock on the island and then truck it in, you're going to look at a little bit more. But about 155 is what I'm hearing now is the going rate for construction like this. Now, if you're looking for something simpler, like a Belizean hardwood home, that this is uh, 
the cost we're getting now for these, and I'm sorry about just scrolling through some pictures here. I just want to be able to show you something as I'm answering your questions. Uh, the Blazing Hardwood Homes, I'm getting prices around seventy-five to 85000 per square foot for something like this. And that's finished. Windows, doors, electric, bathrooms, kitchens, everything to, to good to go. Uh, the last house that was built in Grand Blazing Estates was a house similar to this, uh, elevated, and it had excellent solar, nice finishes, big rainwater cistern, and I think the total cost on that was 115000 not including the lot. So it was, uh, it was a pretty good deal. <clears throat> Here's a question from, from Hal. If someone were to drill a well, how deep do they need to drill and the rough cost? Yeah, it's, it's not very deep, Hal. The, the water table in Amherst Key, because it's a coral atoll, is not very deep. Sometimes you hit fresh water, other times it's a bit brackish. Uh, so what a lot of the homeowners do is they, they use rainwater catchment systems. For example, on this house you're looking at here, they'll put gutters all the way around this house that leads down underneath the home into a large rainwater system. So they'll just uh, use the rainwater, put it through a small filtration system, uh, use it for drinking, bathing, washing dishes, or whatever. Uh, other times you can use a well. Sometimes if you hit a little bit more of a, a saline uh, area of the island, so you got a little bit more salt in the water, you might have to run it through an RO system. But between the well and the, um, the rainwater catchment, usually it's not a problem at all. So I don't know the rough cost because usually those types of things are included in the cost of the build. Uh, so when you get a price on the home, it, that things like that are, are included. Your septic is included, your water is included, all of that. Here's a question from Ian. When will a road be going down to the Mahogany Bay Beach area? That's an excellent question, Ian. Uh, that's one of those questions that I, I can't say publicly right now. Um, there are some different things in the works. Uh, some exciting things coming out, but I'm not at liberty to talk about those. I know you own a beautiful property down there, uh, so congratulations on, on picking that up when you did. And um, hopefully I'll be able to give you some uh, more concrete uh, information here in the next coming months. Uh, but um, I, th I think, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So uh, trust me on this one, and uh, we can uh, we can chat later. Uh, let's see. John has a question. What are the terms on the owner financing? Okay, this is a, a good question, John. A, a lot of times when people start to look at Belize, they think they can walk into a Belize bank and get terms that we're used to in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, you know, 10, 20 percent down, low interest rates of three, four, five percent, and you know, long-term uh, uh, mortgages. In Belize, it's a lot different. The Belize banks lend at the following terms. 40 to 50% down payment, that's of the purchase cost, uh, interest rates of 10 and a half to 12%, and they'll go five to seven years on a loan. So it's pretty aggressive. Plus you gotta pay some points and take out a life insurance policy. So in the 15 years that I've been doing real estate on Ambergris Key, I've only had two or three clients actually use bank financing. Most look for seller financing. And that's, that's where I find it's a, is a good way to, uh, to invest in Belize. So for example, if we go back to these properties that are for sale in Amargus Woods. Let me just pull up the slide here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. All right, Amargus Woods. So you have a, a price tag of thirty-four thousand. Usually, they're going to want to uh, get at least ten percent down because that pays off their real estate fees and, and the G, GST and whatnot. And then they want to put something in their pocket uh, at closing. So let's say twenty percent down at closing. So if you have uh, $34,000, so $7,000 down, and then they'll finance the balance. You would also have to cover your closing costs uh, at that time when you close. So those are 8% stamp duty paid to the Belizean government and 2% closing costs. So that's about uh, another 10%. So what I tell people is when you look at any property that's uh, being offered with seller financing, 20 to 30% is, is a good amount to work with. Now, I have seen clients go lower. For example, there's some properties that I've seen that you can get in as low as 10% down, 15% down. Uh, those are actually absolutely negotiable. And what I found is really helpful for those is if you can come in and you can say to somebody, you know what, I don't have the full 20% right now, but I can give you 10% now. And then over the next maybe 6 to 12 months, get the rest of that balance up there to, to, to 2025 or maybe it takes a year and a half and then close and go to payments. I find that works very well too. So 
<clears throat> if any of you are online today and you're thinking about buying something but you don't quite have the capital necessary to get into something, let me know because uh, we've worked deals out that uh, seemingly were impossible before. Um, everything's negotiable and everything can be worked out if the, uh, the buyer is serious and, um, and the buyer and the seller can work out a deal. So hopefully it answers your, your question, John. Uh, <clears throat> here's a question from Josh. If I wanted to visit the island for tourism of an, for investment lots next month, would you have any recommendations for accommodations during the stay? Yeah, absolutely. What I can do, Josh, is I can email you uh, my top, say, eight recommendations on where to stay. Usually I give people four high-end options if they're looking at staying at something kind of fancy like Victoria House or Cocoa Beach or Grand Caribe, or if they want something just more basic. I usually recommend the Sunbreeze Hotel, uh, places like the Mayan Princess, things like that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that after the webinar, Josh. I'll, I'll send you off a list um, of places you might be able to stay. All right. So we have more questions coming in. Anybody? All right. Very good. I've had some questions come in before this. So let me just address it now about, um, about scams in Belize. Some of you may have heard of the Sanctuary Bay scam. So let's get that uh, gorilla in the room out in the open. Um, some of you might be wondering, can I trust buying real estate in Belize? And I say, it all depends. Uh, you need to do your homework. And you can't just take what somebody tells you at face value. Uh, there's a difference, too, between getting scammed or, or as far as a person deliberately setting out to deceive you for your money and having a project go belly up or bankrupt because it just wasn't thought out well enough or it wasn't planned or they had some budget overruns. And those are completely different things. So for example, if you are buying into a project that is making a lot of promises of what's going to happen in the future, for example, you know, where uh, the promise of this area will have a golf course or this area will have a marina or uh, these lots will be worth this much in so many years, I would take all of that with extreme caution because we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the developer could go bankrupt, the money could dry up, and a lot of times with these big projects, they they fund the project with the sales. So as properties are sold, the developer takes a portion of that money and then he uses it for the infrastructure. Well, what happens when he runs out of money or there's cost overruns? Well, that's where I find some clients have gotten themselves in trouble. Same thing with condo projects. If you buy into a condo project that is being sold off plan, there's a, there's a, a certain amount of risk there because who knows if the developer has put his numbers together uh, close enough to offer the condos at a, at a good deal or, or a fair market value, but who knows if he can actually build and deliver for that. So I would say those are the two things you need to be cautious about. But thirdly, the reason I love dealing in vacant land, especially lots like these in Neural Secret Beach, is because these are titles that are free and clear and transferable, and they're 100% owned by you, the owner. There is no promise of future development. The lot is what it is. The growth will be what it will be. There's no promise of golf courses, tennis courts, marinas, things like that. Uh, those those are, are, are not part of the deal. And that's why there are no HOA fees with properties like this. And it really puts the, the owner in control. For example, if I own a lot, right now I own several lots around Secret Beach, including beachfront lots. I can sit on those lots uh, for 10, 15, 20 years and just let them sit. Or I can build and develop them. But nobody tells me what to do, when I have to do it, what to build. Uh, there's no architectural controls. I, am, I have the freedom. And that's one of the reasons I, I, I love living and working in Belize is because I really have the freedom. Uh, I don't have the restraints and restrictions that I would if I was doing the same type of business back in the United States. So uh, talk about that. So anyways, going back to my thought about my, my rant about uh, getting scammed and, and this being a scam or being watch out for scams. Number one, just make sure you have free and clear title. And number two, always use a third party uh, registered closing agent. So for example, for all of our closings, we use Alberto Villanueva at Belize Key Investments. And he has an office right in San Pedro Town. He handles hundreds of closings a year, been doing this for many, many years. And he will not fund a deal unless the titles are free and clear and we have central bank approval in order to make the transfer. So your money is 100% secure, your land is 100% secure, and uh, you won't be scammed 
uh, so to speak, if you buy something like this. So how about some other questions? Uh, excellent, a lot more coming in. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, Scott, for email. I will definitely email you those uh, hotel recommendations after. Um, John has a question, is it cleared? John, do you mean, are the lots cleared as in removed of brush and trees? Uh, or do you mean, are the titles cleared? Could you just clarify the question, please? Yes, okay, so you mean is it cleared? Yeah, so let's go back to, okay, so this is a good slide here. You see the lots are in their raw native state. They have not been touched, they have not been cleared. The reason is things grow so fast, this is a tropical climate. We get uh, about uh, 50 inches of rain, 56 inches of rain a year, so not a lot, but we do get a fair amount. And if you were to clear your lot today, most likely the lot is going to grow back within a short period of time. So nobody clears their lot until they're ready to build. Uh, you can leave it in its raw native state. At the time you go to build, then your builder will come in, he will clear it, clean it, probably bring in some truckloads of fill, level it off, build your home, and then after all that's done, he will go ahead and bring in a fast growing palm trees, bougainvillea, other greenery and things to, uh, to uh, freshen up the land. Now let, let me show you a good example of that, if I can find a picture here of, of Secret Beach. Oh, here's a good picture. Again, you see all of these beachfront lots are uh, completely in their raw native state. Nothing's been cleared. They have been surveyed, but nothing's been cleared. But let's go back to a picture here of um, of Secret Beach. This isn't going to be important for you to recognize. Ah, excellent. So you see all those big, beautiful palm trees at the Secret Beach Bar and Grill? Okay, when Ed and Dawn bought those two lots from me, uh, those were completely in their raw native state. There were no palm trees. There were nothing on these lots. In fact, what they had to do is they had to come in and they hired a builder to fill the entire two lots with sand and build a retaining wall at the back. So it looked as smooth as, uh, as the Sahara Desert. But what they did is they brought in palm trees, and now you see what the property looks like today. So with any property you look at, some people say, can you show me pics of this lot or can you show me pics of that lot? Yeah, I can show you the pics. But the bottom line is it doesn't matter what it looks like today. What it matters, what you need to know is that that lot, no matter what is on it, no matter how many trees are on it today, most likely your builder is going to come in. He's going to completely bulldoze the entire thing. Why? Because it needs to be leveled. It's in its raw native state. It needs to have some gravel brought in, leveled off, create the proper drainage for water so when it rains, you don't have puddles in the yard. Then build your home or your business. Then bring in the trees, and then you have a beautiful property like this. So I hope that answers your question, John. All right. Very good. Excellent. Here's a question from Jenny. Do you help with finding builders and house plans? Yes, absolutely. So I work very good with some of the island's top builders. I use a Graniel's construction uh, a lot. He's done a property fills, built piers, built many homes for my clients. Um, I also use uh, Alfaro Builders. They've done uh, condo projects and many, many single family homes in the island. So yeah, so when it comes to working with a builder on the island, that's not a problem. I can give you three or four names of people you can contact. And also regarding uh, house plans, you know, you can go on the internet and you can, you know, uh, buy these books, you know, a thousand house plans for 10 bucks. You can do all that. But a lot of them don't apply to building on an island in the Caribbean. For example, we need to work with the materials that work best in a climate like this. We need to think about things such as insects and the heat and different things like that, things that can withstand being on a tropical island. And so and number two, we build in such a way to take advantage of island living. So a home like you would have in the US and Canada, while, while it would look nice on, on, on Emigris Key, probably wouldn't function very well. You need a, a house that's more made for island living. For example, you're probably not going to have any carpet. You're probably going to have tile floors or polished concrete floors because you're going to be tracking sand in from the beach, um, things like that. You're going to want to take advantage of more outside space. So large decks, rooftop living areas, outside kitchens with barbecues, uh, things like that. So what I would recommend is that you come down, talk to a builder, ask them, 
you know, what they would recommend. Tell them what their your dream is, what your vision is, what your budget is, and then sit down, the two of you, and sketch something out, and then have him draw it up and uh, go from there because uh, he probably has a lot of good ideas of what works well and what doesn't work uh, when it comes to building in Belize. So uh, hopefully that helps you out, Jenny. Now, okay, another question. Let me just grab a, a sip of tea, guys. My throat's getting a little bit rough. All right, so here's a, another question from Josh. Thanks for all the questions, guys. I really appreciate it. It says, uh, do you know any trustworthy management companies that can handle maintenance and other details for bookings of Airbnb clients? This would be better after I buy and complete an Airbnb property. Yes, absolutely. So here's a couple of things you can do on that, Josh, is that uh, a house, uh, for example, I'll give you, I'll give you the two real-life examples here, um, and, and they're in my slides. So... Okay, so this house is in, uh, is managed by, uh, or it's an Airbnb rental. I'm not 100% sure how they're handling the check-in and check-outs, but there is a caretaker's house in the back. So what you could do is you could hire a caretaker to live on site. He's provided free room and board in exchange for helping the guests check in and out, dealing with any problems they have, but also he really pays for himself. So for example, he could offer a grocery service. For the guests. Uh, so if they want to make up a big old grocery list and ask them to go to, you know, five or six different shops, getting their meats, their chicken, their veggies, their fish, bring it to the house, um, he can make a nice living like that. He could also provide uh, tour services, setting up all their tours. So he can make a nice little living for himself while caring for your property. And he, he takes care of the lawn and maybe uh, his wife handles the housekeeping, the laundry services, stuff like that. So you could have someone live on site. Um, or you could hire a management company to do this for you. So, for example, let's say you're doing a minimum of one. There's those bells again. So hopefully you can hear me. Um, if you're doing a minimum of, let's say, one week rentals, which some people do. So it's a Saturday to Saturday rental. The management company would come out, do the check in, do the check out. Uh, do the housekeeping, but they don't necessarily live on site. And for that, a lot of the management companies charge around 25% of the nightly rate. So they'll take that as their fee, and then you get the rest. Or um, if you do want to come down and live here full-time yourself, you could do what Kevin and Nova are doing with Casa Cabanas. Now, they actually live here. They live on site, and they have these two one-bedroom rental units right in the front. So they have the house in the back. They have the two rental units out front. They market it as an adults-only place, so they're only accepting couples and uh, no, <laughs> no kids. It's not uh, set up for that, they say. But uh, so that this is the way that they fund the retirement, living in paradise. And I'm sure they have other ways of uh, making income. Maybe they also set up tours for their guests. Maybe they offer uh, uh, private chef services, things like this. Uh, but this is what you can do if you live right on site. So uh, just give you a couple options. Uh, yep, there you go. All right, so what time is it, guys? It is, all right, 106. So I've been going for a full hour now. I know some of you have a few more questions, and I would love to get with them, but I have another appointment. So I'm going to go ahead and log off, but please, if any of you are interested in one of the three properties you saw today, or if you're interested in something else, please let me know. I know today's focus was on Secret Beach, but um, it really, I tell you, I'll be honest and upfront, that's my niche market. Uh, I heavily believe in vacant land. It's a great first investment. Why? Because if your retirement or your ability to use a vacation home is still several years away, then why would you sink a lot of money into a, a fully built condo or home now when it just might sit vacant or might turn a very small profit right now until you get to use it? Vacant land is a way to get in the game before prices escalate, and then you can build when you're ready. Also, to me, I'm a cautious investor. It's a little bit of a safety net. For example, if you buy a piece of property now and you decide in, in five or six years, you know what? My life has taken a different path. It's, it's changed directions. I'm no longer going to be going down to Belize. I, I have other interests. A uh, piece of land is much easier to sell than that custom home or custom condo that you built that is exactly to your liking. So 100% believe in vacant land. But if you're looking for condos or homes, uh, let me know too because I do have a line on several good deals. I have a beautiful five-bedroom beachfront home in the south of Emergus Key listed for $1.1 million. 
Also have a nice two bedroom, two bath condo at La Perla listed for a 219,000 US. That also comes with the financing and a couple other good deals. I know I promised you some updates too regarding the new Jimmy Buffett property, some of the new hotel projects going on the island. I'm sorry, I just didn't have time to cover all of that in today's webinar, but I will schedule another one and uh, give you all those details here really soon. All right, so thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate you attending. You've been a great audience. Again, please email me. Looking forward to doing some good business with you in the future, and all the best. Cheers.